Hi everyone, welcome to a tutorial video showing you how to create a beautiful greeting card, all handmade and even creating your own pattern paper. Now I'm going to be featuring my brand new textures opulence ornate layering stencils there's four stencils in this pack as you can see here they're actually quite large so you can create a big panel of paper or cardstock and then you can cut it down to fit the size of your card so i'm going to be showing you this along with some embossing as well some beautiful gold heat embossing and then we're going to be creating what's known as an eclipse card and that's going to be featuring the bold sentiments again from the brand new opulence collection from textures everything i'm using you'll find down below linked for you both to the us and the uk stores and if you've got any questions or comments please do leave them a thumbs up and a subscribe would be fantastic okay so let's start the tutorial now we are going to start with the gold first because uh, this way i can then ink over the top of everything and not worry about whether i'm going to be getting embossing powder sticking to where i don't want it to stick to and so on so the colors i've chosen are a range of blues blues greens so they are these three i've got distress oxide so we've got stormy sky uncharted mariner and evergreen bow now i've also got and this is a little bit odd because i'm going to be using embossing powder but i've also got fossilized amber the only reason being that if i'm using embossing ink clear embossing ink on a video like this you guys can't see where I'm inking, you can't see where I'm stenciling, but also I don't know if I've gone through the stencil in all the correct places. So I'm going with a yellow ink and because oxides have a pigment to them, it's a little bit slower drying than the dye inks. So these are going to hold the embossing powder beautifully, but I can also see where I'm going as can you. Now I'm going to be working on a pale blue sheet of cardstock. This way I've got a beautifully, beautifully coloured background as well and I'm not worrying about going on to white cardstock. And I'm going on to a large A4 sheet. This way I can then kind of change, switch up later if I want to cut down the size, but I've also got room to tape down my stencil. So I'm going to be using my Creative Craft Products Low Tack Tape. This is just going to go on a couple of areas where I don't have any, any design to get around. And I'm using blending brushes through the stencil. Now, Craft Stash do have a range of stencil blending brushes. I'll make sure they're linked down below as well. They're great for getting in the smaller detail, but to be honest, if you want quick stenciling with this amount of detail, a larger brush is the way to go. So make sure you've got your heat tool ready and you've got all the elements you need to capture your powder, etc. etc. So I'm going to ink through my stencil with the fossilized amber. And I do want to be quite quick with this because although the um, oxides dry quicker than the dye inks in the distress range, you've still not got loads and loads of time for this before it dries and you can't stick your um, embossing powder to it anymore. So as you can see, a nice heavy application of the ink there. These stencils wipe clean beautifully. I'm not worrying about going over the edge because of course I'm going to trim this panel down. Now, if you are using an ink that you're a bit concerned might dry before you get to finish the stenciling of the whole panel, then all you need to do there is do half, come back and do the other half afterwards. It's really easy to realign these. And with these stencils, they are um, symmetrical, so you don't need to worry about which way round you're putting them. Whether you flip them left to right, they're going to be exactly the same. Now you can also use these kind of upside down because the pattern is just a floral pattern. You haven't got to worry about having a right side up to them. So I'm quickly going to remove this. I'm not worried about the tape tearing the paper around the edge because as I say, I'm going to be cutting this down anyway and I will clean that afterwards. It's really important that you get your embossing done first and then do any clean up later. So now I'm going to sprinkle my gold powder all over the design. I've got a gold sparkle here. This is a Paper Mania embossing powder. I tend to use lots of different brands of embossing powder. Wow is one of my favorites also, as is Ranger. So for this one, I just really liked the sparkle. As you can see there, absolutely beautiful. Now I'm going to take this over my waste paper bin and just flick the back of it to take the excess off. And now I'm going to heat this from underneath. Because this ink does dry quite quickly, I don't want to be blowing the powder off before the ink dries. The paper that I'm going on to is around about probably 190 GSM. It's not a heavyweight paper, so I can really easily heat emboss through. You'll see that starting to turn already just at the bottom in the center there. And I'm just going to use this melted powder as a guide as to where my heat's being directed and move that around the entire image. I'm not worried about the outer edges though. 
so there I've got my beautiful gold emboss now look that would be absolutely stunning on its own even if you didn't go in with the rest of the stencils but of course we are going to so I'm just going to take one of the next stencils there isn't really an order to this as to which, you know which ones you should do when which ones go on top of which it's entirely up to you because most of the shapes don't actually overlap the only ones really that overlap there's a few little bits like this you've got detail on these areas um, just here these sort of patched areas otherwise most of the elements are kind of just side by side so it doesn't matter uh, I'm going to go in here with Uncharted Mariner this will be my next color uh, again no real reason I am just playing with uh, picking a color going with it and seeing what the end result is I really love the different combinations that you can get with these stencils um, and playing with different colors now I am inking over some gold parts as you'll probably be able to see that I've got some gold peeking through now the gold in general is going to resist this if you don't want to resist over the gold these are what parts that do overlap you could go in with something like a stays on ink that won't get resisted as I say my stencils I'm going to put them all aside and I'm going to take them to wash them later but look how that is coming on already again that looks absolutely beautiful as it is now the areas where you've got the uh, ink that has sat over the embossing that's held on if you just melt your embossing again a little bit just warm it up so it starts to melt again and just hold this up it shouldn't take long especially if you've just done that layer that is kind of going to encapsulate that ink a little so that it doesn't smudge off it won't be quite as deep and dark as it is when you first apply the ink over the top but it does hold on to the ink so i'm just going to do this over the few areas where it has overlapped the embossing and now that's not going to rub off on my fingers so the next color i'm going to use is evergreen bow so i'm just placing my stencil back down and just have a look all round because there's some areas that where they kind of obviously fit inside each other if that makes sense so uh, be aware of those let's just place this tape so that it's not overlapping anything and the same this side don't want it interfering with your inking they're old pieces of tape but they do the job so then the evergreen bow is a nice green it's kind of well evergreen bow it's kind of a Christmassy green I always feel it's got a hint of teal to it as well a minty green I really love this one again we are going to be going over some of the gold uh, obviously if you didn't emboss this would be layering over other colors so just bear in mind when you're picking your colors that the colors will lay over each other nicely you don't want anything turning muddy or brown if you're mixing them together so that layer I really love the reveal every time it gets more and more exciting Look at the depth that we're getting here now and we've got one more color to go so one more stencil again I've just got my pile of dirty stencils they're all going to be thrown into the sink and washed in a moment so again just looking around making sure that this fits in with the design uh, there's some areas you will need to line up not many though not too many that need to be really pinpoint specific at all and let's just pop this over like so and lastly I'm going to go in with stormy sky which is a grey blue and this one is just a much darker shade of the background color that we've got there we go so the fourth color is done and look at that we have created a beautiful beautiful background paper for ourselves for our cards for our scrapbooks for our journals all in colors that we love so you can do this at home too and as i say you don't have to use all four layers if you get through two layers and you really like the effect you could leave it as that now i'm going to trim this down to fit my desired card base size by cutting excess strips off i'm going to keep these because these can be used either inside the card as a coordinating strip or they can be used on the envelope too now I'm going to be using the bold sentiment birthday here and I'm going to place this over my card I'm going to place it quite central and use a little bit of low tack tape just to hold that down as I run it through my die cutting machine now it's really important that you keep the waste for this uh, you may not you may decide not to use it but I always keep it anyway and then decide later so a little bit of low tech tape there and run that through my die cutting machine 
Now as I say about the waste, there's some that remains in the die, so I'm just going to pop those out. Try to keep a track of them and where they've come from if you can, because that will just help you out a little bit later on. And then let's slide this off again, make sure I keep everything, whether it's got a pattern on it or not. And once I've popped out all the bits from the middle and popped them aside, I'm then going to pop the main word out. There we go. And I'm going to stick this part down first. So this is going to go down completely and I'm going to put it down flat with a wet glue um, because then I can raise up the centerpiece. Now you could do this the other way if you wanted to. You could flatten down the word birthday here and you could raise up the outside. Entirely your choice, whichever you prefer. When I'm pressing these two areas down, because as you can see, there's a bit of wiggle room here, I'm just going to put my die cut back over the top to make sure they're in exactly the right place. Yeah, perfect. Okay, so now I'm going to take one of my favourite adhesive products, and that's the adhesive foam sheets, and I'm going to cut the word birthday again from this. This is a black one, you can also get them in white. I've gone for black to give us a bit more of a drop shadow. Now a couple of tips for die cutting foam. Firstly, you want to run it through your machine once. You don't want to run it forwards and back again because whenever a die is cutting foam, it doesn't wedge in there the way that cardstock does. So as you come back out of the rollers, you're going to get this separation of the die and the foam. And if you, as you come all the way out, it could move. This is extreme, usually it only moves, but moves by the tiniest fraction of a millimetre. Then you run it back through, naturally, a lot of us do that. Um, and then we find that it's double cut and we've got this awful edge that's kind of um, just lots of stringy bits around it and not a clear image. So only run it through the machine, through the rollers once. That will cut through perfectly every time. So I've cut my die and now the second tip is to take yourself a pokey tool and whilst the die cut is still in the backing and has the surround around it, we're going to remove the main part of the word. And now I'm going to place my die cut over the top. I'm going to be really careful, just starting in one corner, leaving the rest lifted up, and then work to another edge or corner, and then one over here, and gently place it down, making sure that it's all in the right place. There we go. Now I can pop this away. I mean, that just looks beautiful on its own, doesn't it? But now I can pop this away from the rest of my card. This time I'm not going to be saving the waste from the inside, or certainly not for this card. There we go. It just, it's so pretty. And like I say, even if you just wanted to place that onto a white card base, it would look gorgeous. I'm going to pop it back in here because we're going to be making the Eclipse style card. So now we can pull the backing off of the foam and carefully place this back in. So you'll notice the design lines up. Again, just start from one edge, work your way round. The centre will fall naturally fall in the right place as long as your edge pieces are correct. There we go. And you see with that black outline, we can just see the word birthday in there. Now we need to place these pieces back in. This is much easier if you've got a pair of tweezers. And I would definitely suggest use wet glue, but glue inside here first before you hunt down your pieces. And it's quite easy because you've now got the pattern so you can quite easily see whereabouts you're placing them. So now we've got that really subtle word birthday hidden there within the pattern, which is so pretty. And we can now put some additional features like uh, complete the sentence. If we want to put a bow on there, gems on there, anything like that, we can. So I was tempted to put my sentiment across the centre there. Um, I just think it's really fun. The birthday's hidden in the background, kind of almost a secret message and then celebrate in style because of course the background paper is so stylish. Um, but actually I think if we bring it down at least it's clearer to read the word birthday then. So I'm going to adhere this just down the bottom here with some foam tape. Rather than breaking into a new roll of foam tape though, I'm going to utilise these waste pieces from my adhesive foam uh, that I had earlier. Again they're black so they're going to match the front of this sentiment strip anyway. And I'm just going to cut these up and put them on 
as I need them. Nobody sees the adhesive under here so it doesn't really matter what it looks like. And there we have it, a fun eclipse card with absolutely any background you like but this layered stencil background is so beautiful for this effect. Now there'll be lots more videos on my YouTube channel utilising the textures opulence range so keep an eye out for those and don't forget of course to go along to my website and download the free PDF where you've got the step by step instructions for both this card plus a bunch of others as well. You'll find links again for everything I've used down below and I'd love it if you could subscribe to my channel. We think you're also going to really like this video just here. So take care everybody and have a lovely day.